Thank you so much, choir. That was, uh, that was lovely again. Uh, so uh, before we get started here today, I, uh, I, I want to do a couple of introductions. Uh, the um, uh, the grinberg hoverston uh, uh, nation is in force here this morning. Uh, my parents, uh, Carlton and Della Grinberg, are here. And... <laughs> And this is the first time they've come to First Lutheran, so uh, I'm, I'm thrilled that you get to see this place I now call home. Um, got good friends here, Jim and Karen Wold. Uh, Jim's, uh, Jim's dad was uh, my pastor when I was growing up, and I can't remember a time I didn't know Jim, but uh, Palmer Wold was, um, he's, he's one of the reasons I'm in this business. Uh, and so, and we have, let's see, uh, We've got uh, my, my daughters here, uh, we've got uh, some of the Kern extra family here, and uh, if you, and by the way, with the Kerns, if you see Joan Kern holding hands with a strange man, um, it's not, it's, that's Jane Westfall, she's holding hands with her husband, uh, the, the twin sisters. Uh, so uh, so we're, we're glad to be here, and you know, the, the old adage goes that, you know, if you can't pack them in with oratory brilliance. You just bring your own congregation. <laughs> and that's what we've done here today. Um, so we've been uh, spending a little bit of time here the last several weeks uh, talking about the good bones of the faith. Uh, and uh, this is the last in the series. Uh, we've been uh, looking at kind of what it is to be a Lutheran. And, uh, and, you know, not that Lutheran is any big deal. It's, it's, it's not like Lutherans are better than Presbyterians or Roman Catholics. It, it, it is an expression of the faith um, that we hold dear because what it does, more than it is a church, it's a movement. It's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a way of saying, let's always find our center back in Jesus Christ. And that's been going on for 500 years with a man by the name of Martin Luther, as we know. Uh, Luther uh, lived in a time uh, when the Bible wasn't read, couldn't be read because in many cases people couldn't read it because they couldn't read and write Latin and, and Greek and Hebrew, they spoke German. And so uh, Luther started reading the Bible and started applying the Bible, the scriptures, uh, to a church that had lost its way. A church that, uh, that said uh, to its parishioners, it said, um, what you do will get you in heaven. It's, it's, it's good works that get you there. And, and Luther said, well, that's fine, but I don't see that in the Bible. He opened it up. And for many people, the very first time anybody had heard words like, we are justified by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. There's nothing in there about good works. And this is what Luther did all, all over the place. He, he, was, uh, he was looking at the Bible and, and testing everything that the church did against, um, against what our scriptures tell us uh, about the Christian faith. And so when it came time to teach his congregation about this Christian faith, remember, they couldn't read or write. They were depending upon the priests and the church to tell them what was true and right. Luther, uh, as you know, the last part of our series, he wrote this book called The Small Catechism. And there's nothing magic about this book. It's, it's not scripture, but what it does do is it points us to scripture. And then it then in turn points us to Jesus Christ. And so for the last few weeks, we started at the beginning of uh, Luther's Small Catechism uh, by talking about the Ten Commandments. And then after that, uh, we hit the Apostles' Creed. Uh, last week, we talked about uh, that head knowledge of the creed in action, the Lord's Prayer. And now, finally today, we are on uh, the sacraments, uh, the sacrament of the altar and the sacrament of holy baptism. And, and, and that's really sort of everything that's in Luther's small catechism. And uh, so Luther in his day, uh, and, and to this day, the Catholic Church, Luther, Luther was Roman Catholic when he starts out. He didn't want to leave the Catholic Church. It, it worked out that way. Um, but when, so he, uh, he's in the Catholic Church, and there are seven sacraments in the Catholic Church at, at that time as there are now. Um, and I did a little study on this this week. They're, they're grouped into three. There is uh, baptism, confirmation, and communion. And those are called the rites of initiation. That's how you get into the church. Uh, there is marriage and priesthood, ordination. Those are called the holy orders. And then the last two are confession and the anointing of the sick. 
Uh, and, I, and, and those are called the healing sacraments. Isn't that interesting? Confession is a healing sacrament. I like that a lot. And of course, so what Luther does is he starts with these seven sacraments and he does what he does with everything. He starts applying scripture to it. And uh, he's looking at scripture and he's, he, he comes up with three basic rules based on scripture of what a sacrament needs to be. And so the first thing a sacrament is, those of you who were in confirmation probably remember this, is that a sacrament is instituted by Christ. It's been commanded by Christ. And you, you might say, well, where is baptism commanded? Matthew 28, the Great Commission. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Holy Son, and Holy Spirit. And lo, I will be with you always to the end of the age. Communion the same way. Do this in remembrance of me. So first is instituted by Christ. The second rule for Luther is that it had to have some kind of ordinary, everyday, common element involved. And so we know, for instance, that communion has bread and wine, and baptism is water. And then the third one, and this is really the most important one, because the bread and the wine and, and the water, they don't do much for us without this. It has to communicate the promise of God's salvation. In other words, basically it has to be the word, right? But the word is God's salvation. And so when Luther applies these three rules, instituted by Christ, common, ordinary, everyday element, and communicates God's salvation, he comes up with two sacraments, baptism and communion. Now, so we're going to throw stones at the Catholics now? No, we're not. Because, you know, all those other five sacraments, we do all those things in here at St. At, excuse me, St. Olaf. My goodness. <laughs> I preached there yesterday. You can, you can excuse it. Um, so um, we do those other five things. We, um, we have confirmation. We're having confirmation next week. Right, Declan? Confirmation's next week. We have uh, confession. Um, we, uh, we don't do confession in a confession booth, but I will tell you that when people knock on my office door, confession happens. When, uh, when, when you see someone in your, uh, in, in your place of work and you see that they're having a down day and you say, how's it going? And they start telling you about what's troubling them in their lives. That's confession. Um, marriage, we do marriage. We have ordination. We think it's an important part of what we do. So all these things, anointing of the sick, all of these, uh, all of these things are a part of what we do. They just don't rise to the place of a sacrament. Let me say this again. Instituted by Christ, common, ordinary, everyday element, and communicates God's love, God's forgiveness, God's salvation. That's what's important. And that's what happens in our sacraments. So it's not just bread and wine. It's more than that. It says, this is my body given for you. This is my blood shed for you. And when you eat and drink it for the forgiveness of sins, that bread and that wine, that body and that blood physically becomes a part of who you are. The same is true with baptism. Pour a little water on a child's head or an adult's head for that matter. And you say some words. It's not the water that does it, but it's the water with the promise. Because that promise is not, it, it, it's a washing of your sins. It's literally crucifying that which separates you from God so that the sin dies. As Paul says in Galatians, it is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives within me. And that happens through baptism. Powerful, powerful stuff. God's word of promise coming to us in physical ways. Let's sing.
Okay, so we did a little head knowledge stuff here. Now let's go to the heart because that's what's really important. It is the heart of the matter. God comes to us in physical ways and becomes a part of who we are in our everyday life. Uh, so last week at church, I made a mistake. It's hard to imagine, I know, I know. And you know, and I am a Grinberg, which means that I don't admit these things easily. <laughs> right, Dad? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I made a mistake. So it, it, it all started um, when I, I was feeling a few comments that communion was taking a long time. And of course, you know, we're opening the overflow these days, and it, it does, it takes a long time. So, of course, communion itself is the problem, right? So what I did was, instead of, instead of doing uh, two people serving communion, we had four people serving communion. And I was over here with the bread, and we had the wine come by. We had two other people over here, bread and wine. And we sort of did this round robin, and it went pretty fast, didn't it? Too fast. Way too fast. I felt it after the first table. People were rushed. I wasn't the only one who noticed it. <laughs> Do I hear an amen in the house? <laughs> so at coffee, a, a, few of, uh, a few folks kind of got together and they were talking about, did you feel rushed? Yeah, I felt kind of rushed too. And, and then, they, and then they, they, they got Peterson involved, Dan Peterson. <laughs> and they said, you know, you're the, you were the head of the call committee. You got this guy here. I mean, you go talk to him. And, uh, and so... And so Dan and I had a really good conversation, but I already knew it. I could see it at the first table. I could see what was happening, and I could see it was wrong. We won't do that again, okay? You can applaud if you want. That's all right. <laughs> um, but, you know, what happens at that altar rail is life and death. It is everything. It is so important. And I want you to think about kind of the, the craziness of that. We are giving you a pressed wafer that is completely tasteless. We are giving you half a sip of Mogan David wine, the official wine of Jesus Christ. And it's terrible stuff to eat and drink. It's not good. And it's the smallest meal you will eat all week. And you, 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 the craziness of this is that people get in a twist over it. And you know something? They should. Because it's not about the bread, and it's not about the wine. It's about you folks coming up, kneeling at this altar, with all that you have carried throughout the week. And you eat the bread. And you take his body. And you drink the wine. And you receive his blood. This is life-giving stuff. We can't cut that short. It is who we are. It makes us who we are. Communion, baptism, they are transformational. They change our world and make it into something new, and right, and in line with God's love and God's will. Let's sing. So I, I, I said something on Wednesday night that I think I need to reiterate because it's, it's just so crazy important. Um, uh, Luther talks about the greatest enemy of the faith is unbelief. And um, by that, what he means is you believe that God's free gift of salvation 
is for everybody but you. And the last thing I want to have happen in this building is for people to come up here with all the garbage in their life and leave with the same garbage that they brought in here. That's what Luther calls unbelief. It's not judgmental, but it's what we do. And it is the devil working in our lives to say, you know, if the preacher knew what was on my heart and where I have been and what I have done and how, uh, how I am so separated from God, he would never say those words to me. Give that up now. What happens here is transformational, and it is for you. This is my body given for you. This is my blood shed for you. And yes, I know about all your ups and all your downs. I know about your sin. I know about your trial. I know about your joys and your celebrations. I know it all. And this is for you. Bring the garbage in. Set it there and leave it there and walk out free. Mike Householder, pastor at uh, Lutheran Church of Hope, likes to say about the church, there's a party going on here. But you know, folks, when you carry the garbage out, every time you come in here, and the days that you carry it out turns into years, and the years that you carry it out turns into decades, you're missing the party. Today is the day of transformation. Today is the day when you leave it here and walk out free. That's what's at stake when we have communion. That's what's at stake when we pour water on those who come in here for the first time and say, yes, I want to be a part of this faith. There's a party going on here. Don't miss the party. This is for you. The God of all creation has come into your life, into your world, and he says, you are the most important thing in my existence. I give up everything that I am for you. So my friends, come to the table. Come to the table and leave the garbage here. For what you are receiving is a sacrament. Literally the word means the holy mystery of God. And the mystery is this, that the God of creation died for you. Receive it, believe it, and know that it is for you and your life. And for that we give him thanks and praise. Amen.